doing Nashville Daily. Uh, sorry for the delay. It's been a long 24 hours. Uh, my dad had a heart attack yesterday, and I had to rush all over around the country. But I'm here. We're here today. We're going to be talking about some short things and some long run- runways. We're going to be talking about the airport here in a second. Uh, but today's episode is brought to you by ExploreTours.com. <laughs> if you want, uh, if you want to learn more about the city of Nashville, come take a tour with us at ExploreTours.com. Use that code ND10 to take 10% off. Uh, so there's a few things that we're going to be talking about at the airport. Uh, they've striked some new deals with some airlines. There's a new nonstop flight going to Cancun. And also, there's talks that the airport may be expanding. Who would have thought? Yeah. Okay, so let's get to this this nonstop business because... People are just staring at me awkwardly of drinking some liquid death. <laughs> um, so, oh, yeah. Yeah, it, we, we're going to do the camera switch. It's been a long day already. It's, it's been, yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Sponsors not, Liquid Death? That'd yes, awesome. Liquid Death sponsors, um, please. Okay, so non-fly, non-stop flights. This is kind of a big deal because this is international. Well, um, doesn't the, doesn't Southwest have a non-stop? So, uh, yeah, Southwest has a lot to to Mexico. It, it, is, it is funny that the Mexico is not really considered in our, like, when we talk about non-stop flights out of Nashville. Uh, Mexico's not really brought up a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and those those flights like just south of Florida, uh, but we we have a lot of those. The only one, the, London is the only one that's actually brought up in conversation. Yep. Uh, for international flights, but uh, there there are a few. There are plenty. Um, I've taken an international flight to Cancun. Uh, so, yeah, so, I, so I'm, so I'm, I'm literally exist. I'm literally on Southwest.com. Uh, they have a one, so they have a flight from BNA to Cancun, but you have to stop. Oh, so you have to stop either at Baltimore, or Houston, or Austin. Okay, gotcha. I don't remember. I don't think I did a stop, uh, or maybe I did out of Atlanta. I, I don't remember. It's been a while. Was it Delta um, that had a direct flight? I don't remember. Okay. Um, but uh, this is an American airline nonstop flight from Nashville beginning December 9th. It is very interesting that usually when there's a flight announcement there's it's always over six months before it gets implemented mm-hmm. um but december 9th uh american airlines will operate flights to cancun's uh cancun on saturdays only saturdays yeah. only through march so this is a very temporary thing too it's probably just to get a some winter break rush yeah yeah uh they're probably gonna see the success it's, it's, of it yeah and then decide if this is going to be a full-time thing yeah. Uh, the company also plans to add nonstop service from Cincinnati and expand the number of existing flights, Charlotte, Miami, Austin, Texas, and Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, so that is an international flight added uh, to Cancun December 9th through March, only on Saturdays uh, from fun. American Airlines. They're yeah. probably gonna be, it's probably going to be booked out because everyone's going to want to get away from it, whatever this weather is going to be this winter. That's that's uh that's my ideal situation <laughs> i'm i'm not a you're a winter person i love it i'm i'm not not, I not a go, winter person at all i want to go to the deep mountains of montana in the middle of winter where it's like nine feet of snow <laughs> see i'll go to those mountains in the summer where the, the summer. where the flowers are pretty in the summer. uh-huh yep uh okay so more news on the airports uh the national international airport also known as bna so they struck an eight-year, 50-50 rent deal with airlines to offset costs. If you're wondering what that is, me too. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We're going to learn what it is. Uh, this apparently took two years of, of intense of negotiations. Intense, sweaty negotiation. Uh, they sweaty. sealed the deal on a new use and lease agreement with its top airlines, it's an eight-year contract. It not only cements a robust relationship with the 10 signatory airlines, but it also safeguards the airport's high credit rating. Oh, that's very important because they have a lot of money they need to spend. They have a lot of projects they need to do. They said uh, this is vital to financing all the upcoming construction projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, as BNA continues to experience this growth, 30% growth since the lifting of COVID-19 travel restrictions, uh, several major expansions are in progress to 
uh, accommodate the surge. We've talked about this a lot of times on the podcast if you've been a listener for a while. Uh, but this new airport use and lease agreement known as the AULA, AULA, uh, increases airline rental fees to cover airport operating costs and allows airlines to profit from terminal concession sales uh, while contributing to reducing airport capital debt. Um, for travelers, the cost of a ticket will increase, but the amount of that increase is, is not known. Yeah, it's not known. Uh, so this is coming from the Tennessean. Um, let's see. Terminal r- rental rates will increase from $116.50 to $176 per square foot. Airlines will now be required to have six daily gate turns from four to five turns or at least 900 scheduled aircraft seats on each gate to maximize space. That's a lot of flights. Yeah. So what I guess I don't get here yet um, is what the benefit is for the airlines. Like, what do they get out of that? That they get that the signing. They get the space. So probably they're able to have more flights. I assume, like coming in and out. Yeah, maybe. And and maybe I just don't know enough about it because would they not already have the space? Or maybe maybe they're securing that space for the future yeah. when those new areas are open and they they can say, yeah, 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 we want to be a part of that. We'll sign now. Well, this, this is deal. interesting. So further down in the Tennessee, and it says next year's operating budget recently approved by the authority, which we're going to talk about that in a second. I just put this other article in here, Aaron, about how Metro is suing the state of Tennessee. Uh, so go ahead and open that one. Okay. Too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, projects, uh, an estimate of $11 million of employment, almost a million dollars more than uh, this year. Operating revenues are anticipated to rise by 56.3 million to 282.3 million. Yeah, yeah. I mean, construction will increase, do that. That's, I think that's the main thing. Yeah, while expenses increase by 26 million to 165.9 million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean when uh the it's the good news, the the operating revenues um, are anticipated to rise expenses increase, but they're adding a lot. They've, they've, they have a lot of funding that's already there. Yeah. Uh, so it's not like it's gonna, it's not like that's going to put them in a bind where they didn't know where that money's coming from. So that's kind of the good news. Um, but that kind of puts them into a higher class of, of operating for sure. That's like four times the amount of, of, uh, operating budget, right yeah, yeah, which is, which is fantastic. Yeah. The, the thing that's interesting about the BNA is how local centric it is. I, I yeah, love going yeah. through BNA, and you could eat at all of these local restaurants. You could shop locally, and that's one thing that Nashville has. The BNA has done extraordinarily well. Yeah, uh, and I would say they're probably one of the best airports, maybe besides Denver, that has done something like this. And if you didn't know, there is a 1.6 billion five-year capital improvement plan that is in motion. Uh, Tennessee says it features projects such as new parking revenue control system. Ooh. Which already they have they one of the most advanced bank. parking lots yes. in this city. Yep. Um, expensive too. Uh, concourse A expansion, airfield improvements, and taxi lane expansions. Okay. So that's also what's going on. Okay. So Stuart, what what is going on with this this uh, authority? Airport Authority lawsuit. Yeah. So the the next two articles we're going to be covering are from uh, WSMV News Channel Four. And we have been talking about this the last few months, and the state of Tennessee has basically said, hey, we're going to appoint people on the Metro Authority Airport Board. And so now the city of Nashville is filing a lawsuit against the state of Tennessee. So the Metropolitan Government of Nashville is suing the state of Tennessee due to the new law giving appointment power to state officials for the Metro Nashville Airport Authority Board, according to a lawsuit filed this last Monday. The lawsuit states that Metro Nashville is suing over the Nashville Airport Authority Transfer Act, which Governor Bill Lee signed into law on May 19th. In the suit, Metro claims that the act changed the structure and control of the Metropolitan Nashville Airport Authority by vacating the authority's current board of commissioners, removing the power of Metro Nashville's mayor and council to appoint and confirm those commissioners. Uh, This action... Okay, so... It says this action violates Tennessee Constitution. So uh, it's interesting. Uh, if you yeah. want to read the lawsuit, let's see how many pages it is. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's it's a lot. This this looks like it's like 50 or more pages. 37. 37. All that's, right. That sounds terrible. You could read it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to read it. Uh, so th- there's some other news happening. This is also from uh, News Channel 4. Some people are concerned about the airport expanding. 
And if you haven't been near the airport recently, they have been expanding aggressively over the last five years. Yes. And they, they're redoing the uh, some of the runways. They're redoing. They're adding that hotel. They've added that brand new lobby, which is incredible. They're redoing the infrastructure near this area. And so there's a lot of concern that people are going to be losing their home yeah. because of the airport expansion. But what I say to them, if you live near the airport that's thriving, they're going to be expanding at some point. They own a ton of land around the airport already. Let me um, just throw up Google Maps real quick uh, with Greg, the Google guy. He is saying hello from the air. I thought this was interesting. So this this family in this article, we're not going to tell the whole story of this family, um, but there's a family re- that reached out to the council member for that area, Russ Bradford. Yep. He said to the family, he said, these plans have been in place since 2019. And he said he didn't know how they didn't know about it. Yeah, I just, I don't understand. So uh, go ahead and show my computer, Aaron. So basically, if I, if I, if I, ha- if I know correctly, so this big site right here, this is about to be demolished here soon, this building here. And that's going to allow expansion of some runways. But the Nashville International Airport, according to a lot of the articles I was reading from like the 1960s when this really started to get established, they have uh, land use rights for basically this entire little corner right here that where Seven Oaks is. That's I don't know if it's all owned by the airport, right? But they have these rights to use that land for airport expansion. Yeah. It, so also over here, where this little quarry and stuff is, there's talks that they they occupy almost all of this land or have like the land use rights. Well, so this one specifically plans to expand a runway to extend across Murfreesboro Pike. Okay, so it's going to be, it's probably this one, runway right here, so that we can get more international flights. Yeah, I could I could definitely see that. Mm-hmm. Um, and and uh, Russ Bradford also said that it would probably be at least three years before somebody would have to move. Yeah. So and that's been a place since 2019. That's seven years, mm-hmm. seven years of of planning and notice. Oh, yeah. I think that's I that's think that's, I think that's 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 a lot of time. Not saying it's unfortunate, but uh, it's a lot of time. Also, Stuart, your house has a connection with something just like this. Uh, yes. So. TVA has a land use right on my property. No, no, no. I'm talking about how no. it's your house. That's not its original spot. No, it's not. So my my house, I'm not going to show you guys where <laughs> that is. Uh, it was on one road, and because of the airport expansion, they moved it they, they to l- another part of town. Literally picked it up. Yeah, so my house was built in, like, the 1950s, and then they moved it in 2007. Yeah. So they, they do this type of stuff all the time. Now the question is: Is are they going to relocate those other houses, right? <laughs> or are they just going to demolish it because it's a lot easier to put it in the dumpster, right? It, I mean, sounds like there's probably a lot of options there. Um, okay, so there's a few other things that are happening here in Nashville that that kind of just came down the uh, the, the news pipe. line, and I'm getting a bunch of ads right now. Um, Garth Brooks announced that he is launching a Nashville radio station called. The big six one five. Well, happy six one five day, Nashville. Yeah, it is. It is uh, June fifteenth, June six. So six one five. So uh, fitting announcement. I would say good, very good timing on that mm-hmm. uh, for for Garth Brooks. You think they're um, going to have the uh, is, radio station at his new bar? I, I would assume so. Um, we're going to read through this press release, but that's exactly what I thought whenever I, I saw that. Uh, so this is coming from Fox seventeen. He had a press conference for it and everything. Uh, let's see. Tune in radio will be uh, tune in radio will be home of the big six one five and sevens radio network. Tune in is a global audio streaming service providing news, radio, sports, music, and podcasts to more than seventy five million monthly active users. So it's digital. It's going to be a digital oh, it, radio dude, station. It, it is right on their front page. Uh, so television and radio broadcaster. Uh, Stormy Warren will be the host of the Big 615. Uh, Sevens Radio will be launching in multiple stations on TuneIn in 2023. It'll be dedicated to country music and more. I don't know what Sevens is. Maybe it's Garth Brooks reference. I don't know if either. I know his music that well. Uh, we are going to lead, lean a little more traditional when it comes to music. Uh, Brooks added, he says, the balance between families and 
males on this channel is fantastic. Um, and that's it. So we don't have any information about if they're going to actually have a uh, kind of a physical streaming or a host location inside of Friends in Low Places. I would ass I would assume so. It would be weird to put it anywhere else. Yeah. So I'm, I'm on I'm on TuneIn.com. Yeah. And uh, it is on their front page. So th as soon as you go to their front page, click nice. this, listen now. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, country music from the heart of Music City. So it looks like so it looks Garth like it's Brooks. already already going. So I'm gonna just press dismiss. <laughs> um, okay. I, this is probably the announcement video. Yep. Okay. We, you could watch that. We're going to put this in the show notes. You can watch this whole video. Uh, okay. That's pretty much it. Okay. So I guess it's a, just a digital radio station. Yeah. Just a digital radio station. Um, it just, it tells you what's recently played. Okay. Fun. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right. One of the other things that uh, kind of just came down the line this week, um, there's a Nashville-based Italian kitchen called Nicoletto's. Uh, it's a very, very, very good local brand. Uh, they are closing their doors to their Hillsboro Village location. Uh, to they, be they, honest, they closed I mean, it June 11th. This news came out June 13th uh, on the National Business Journal, so it probably came out somewhere else uh, first. What were you saying, Stuart? To be honest, I didn't even know they had a Hillsboro location. Was that their first location the no i think they're east 29th? nashville okay their first yeah location. so east nashville was 2016 hillsboro was on belcourt avenue belcourt. in 2019 okay um the hillsboro village uh not to be confused with hillsboro pike uh but they said in a statement a couple weeks ago we had a meeting with our hillsboro crew and we discussed that we would be winding down our operations at the hillsboro village location due to the fulfillment of our lease our crew has been absolutely resilient during the last three years, and we're extremely grateful for the opportunity to serve the Hillsboro community. Uh, that's that. There's a row of like oh, well, five. I have, I have it up right now. Restaurants I'm looking at in it right this now. area. So and it is. It is like four Asian cuisine restaurants, and Nicoletto's was right in the middle. Yep. So and, this and is going to be. Of, it's off of Google Maps. So you have the Dumpling House. This is Belcourt Avenue. Can we? Yeah, yeah, we'll send Greg. You down have after this. sushi eighty eight. Yeah, you have meat noodles, which that sounds interesting. And it's not meat noodles; it's M E E T instead of M E A T. Okay. So you have this is what you're seeing. So you have all of these like Asian inspired restaurants here on Bell Court, and then you have another one right down the road. Yep. And then Nicolotos is in the middle. Yeah. So like, you you have brought this up before multiple times. There's Nicolotos. Uh, but it's no longer there. Yep. So you've brought this up more a, a few times on the podcast. You said, is this the, going to be the new Chinatown? It could be. Of Nashville. I think it's something we need. Um, I think this is just going to be an area known for Asian fusion fusion type food. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested yeah. to see what happens. And, and I think Nicoletto's probably wasn't hesitant to do this, especially after the success of their Donaldson launch. Yeah, their Donaldson location. It's I busy. always see it. It's busy. It's, it's busy. It's more of a to go option. Yep. So they may be considering opening three of those for the cost they could probably get for their their uh, Hillsboro Village yep. location. Yeah, there's with all the square footage there. Little yeah. micro kitchens. Yeah. The the interesting thing is like I want to look into this meat noodles a little bit more, um, <laughs> because like if you have another noodle competitor right next to you. Yeah, go ahead and full screen that. Let's let's keep looking at that. Okay, so it's like Asian inspired noodles. So if you have two noodle places next to each other, who's going to do better? Well, that's what Chinatown is. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> like, it is all of those amazing foods just in one spot, and you're just like, where do I go and eat? And you just walk in and you pick a place. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's that's almost all the news today. Yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks, thanks for, for the afternoon episode, <laughs> guys. <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us this afternoon. Uh, go grab you some uh, severed lime liquid death it's one of my favorites yeah it's, I, uh, it's pretty good i enjoy the sparkling water it's probably my favorite i like the i like ice i think ice is my favorite brand of them all ice is is good but there's uh i think it gets a little bit cooler and a little bit more refreshing in a can let us know your thoughts
Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.